Good morning. This is Deepak. So I am just adjusting the camera a little bit, adjusting my seat, and I want to share with you uh, some insights from the teachings of the Vedanta and the Upanishads. And uh, then I'll also give you a little bit of a tour of where I am, which is uh, an amazing place called the Atlantis Resort in Paradise Island in the Bahamas. Okay, so what I'm about to share with you is uh, not from me, but from the teachings of what Aldous Huxley and others call the perennial philosophy. The perennial philosophy. And it's based on the teachings of the sages of the Upanishads. So in, in those uh, great teachings, uh, which come from unknown sages and rishis, um, the causes of human suffering are called kleshas, K-L-E-S-H-A-S. -E That's the Sanskrit word for human suffering. And there are five of them. By the way, Buddha's teaching is also derived from the five kleshas, the four noble truths. Number one, there is suffering. Number two, there are causes of suffering. Number three, there's a way out. And number four, the way out, is the eightfold path to enlightenment, which is right perspective, right um, uh, meditation, right mindfulness, right speech, uh, right uh, livelihood, etc. So, you know, uh, it, there are eight uh, aspects to enlightenment. Uh, I'll repeat them if I can uh, think of, remember them clearly. Okay, the first is right or revolutionary thinking. The second is right perspective. The Third is right focused awareness or revolutionary aspects of it, or right concentration. The fourth is right livelihood. The fifth is right uh, effort, daily practice diligence. Um, the sixth is uh, expanding awareness. The seventh is mindfulness. And the eighth is speech. I remembered all of them. Okay, so he derived these from the five kleshas. And the five kleshas are the five causes of human suffering. And the first cause is not knowing who you really are, not knowing yourself. The second is craving for that which is impermanent, grasping the ungraspable, the third is uh, recoiling from impermanence as well. The fourth is identifying with your ego, which is a social construct. And the fifth is the fear of death. So uh, those are the five causes of human suffering. How we inflict suffering on us and how we inflict suffering on everyone else as well is coming from not knowing our true self. By the way, if you want to join discussions on this, then check in with discoveryourcosmicself.com. It's the URL posted right below here. It's, all this, the, it's also the site where you can buy uh, the new book I have with Minas Kafatos, which is called uh, uh, You Are the Universe discovering your cosmic self and why it matters. Okay, so now let's go to the most fundamental cause, therefore, of suffering, which is the cause of all suffering, is not knowing yourself. And here is a very basic uh, understanding. We confuse ourselves with our body. And uh, Vedanta says the body is not who you are, it's an impermanent experience in yourself, and yourself is consciousness. The self is consciousness. 
where are you experiencing your body right now? I can experience my body as seeing in consciousness. I can experience my body as touching in consciousness. I can uh, smell it, taste it, etc. I can hear it as I speak. Where are these experiences happening? Of course, they're happening in consciousness. Because if you look inside the brain, there is no taste, there is no smell, there is no um, form, there is no color, there is no image, there is no sound. It's all totally silent. What there are in the brain are called neural correlates. But even when I see neural correlates, that seeing is happening in consciousness. When I think about neural correlates, that thinking is happening in consciousness. So where is this consciousness? Well, it is formless. It has no form. You can't see it because it's doing the seeing. You can't touch it because it's doing the touching. You cannot taste it because it's doing the tasting. It's doing the smelling. You can't hear it because it's doing the hearing. So um, it's not a perceptual object. It's not even uh, something you can conceptualize, but without it, there would be no experience. It's the source of all experience. As my friend Rupert Spira says, it is that in which consciousness is that in which all experience occurs, all experience is known, out of which all experience is made. It's the knowing element in every experience. Whatever we experience, our own body, our own thoughts, our own emotions, our imagination, um, the experience of our body, the experience of the perceptual world, all of this is happening in our own awareness, in our own consciousness, which is formless. We are a formless being having the experience of form and phenomena. In fact, all form is phenomena, and all phenomena constantly and intermittently arises from formless being. So awareness is first, and then out of that, its modulations, its fluctuations create thought and feeling and images and sensations and sense perceptions. And then we conceptualize all of that as the mind, the body, and the physical universe. So the key to suffering is your own self, knowing your own self. When you know yourself, you know all that is known by the self. The universe is an experience in the self. The ground of the individual being is the ground of all beings. Atman is Brahman. The self of the individual is the self of the universe. Why does this um, solve the problem of suffering? Because once we know the self as formless, as timeless, as therefore not in time, therefore not subject to birth and death, then we are free, first of all, from the fear of death, which happens to experience, not to you. Death happens to a thought, as does birth happen to a thought. Birth and death happen to emotions. Birth and death happen to sensations and perceptions that we call the physical body and the physical universe. But um, that which is observing this, the silent witnessing awareness, Behind all experience is formless being, and therefore not subject to birth or death. To quote once again in the Bhagavad Gita, um, fire cannot burn it, weapons cannot shatter it, water cannot wet it, wind cannot dry it. Um, it is unborn. It's not subject to death. It's not subject to death. That's who you are, Tattvamasi. Aham Brahmasmi. Aham Brahmasmi literally means I am the universe. So um, join us on discoveringyourcosmicself.com 
And if you get the book, by the way, before the 7th of February, you can also join a course free of charge that is given by me and Minas Kapatos on science, consciousness, and ultimate reality. So I encourage you to uh, come and join the discussion boards. Amongst others, Aurora Carlson from Sweden is moderating the site, as will I, and as will um, Menas Kapatos, my physicist colleague, who's also uh, basically um, a cosmic, uh, cosmologist and a quantum physicist. And if you uh, do not wish to buy the book, we will still offer the course and we will still obviously be engaging in this conversation on a constant basis with you because we are um, uh, basically very interesting um, the, uh, looking forward to engaging with you in the huge task we have uh, to alleviate suffering, not only for human beings, but all the suffering we inflict on our planet, <clears throat> all the suffering that we inflict to each other, <clears throat> and all the suffering that we inflict on our own self. Join me, join me in us, join the conversation. The site, once again, is discovering your cosmic self. Um, dot com discoveryourcosmicself.com and the book is You Are the Universe Discovering Your Cosmic Self and Why It Matters. Okay, now before I uh, leave this uh, conversation, I want to give you a little bit of a tour of where I am in the Bahamas. So just, uh, just be patient for a second and I will start showing you where I am. I'm stepping out now from my bedroom and right before me there is um, the Atlantis Resort which is um, in Paradise Island in the Bahamas. Okay, so now where am I experiencing that beautiful building, those palm trees and the ocean out there? And last night I saw a few ships in the distance, and uh, uh, this is, I'm just taking you through my veranda. So where is all this experience happening of sound, of texture, of taste, of form, of color? It is happening in my own being. So there's a poem of Rumi, he says, look at your eyes, they are so small, and yet they see enormous things. In another place, um, Rumi says, I am so small, how can this whole universe exist in me? Well, this whole universe exists in your being, and that includes your body, it includes your mind, it includes everything that we call reality, but perceptual reality is nothing other than an intermittent experience of sensations, images, feelings, and thoughts. And this is how we create our experience of the universe. Curving back within ourselves, we create again and again. That's why Rumi also says, um, no, not Rumi, in the Bhagavad Gita, first, Prakratim Swambashtva by Vishrajami Puna Puna, curving back within myself, I create again and again. Prakratim swam washed by Vishrajami Puna Puna. Namaste. I'll see you and connect with you from New York.